Hey, okay, we can start then. Awesome. Yeah, we, I told you this 10 minutes ago. Okay, we're good. Okay, don't worry. This episode is going to be short, I promise. <clears throat> nice. I've heard that one before. Hey, no, this time it's true. I only wrote <clears throat> half of my dis- my discussion points here. Ugu <clears throat> <clears throat> Gaga. Baby, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to do my bit. <laughs> hey, welcome you. to the Funky Anime Podcast. What? I, you're not supposed to enter the show. I'm hosting the show. Okay, Pato, introduce the show. No, I, I had a bit and everything ready. <laughs> you can't just oh, say Pato. baby, baby. <laughs> hey, Pato, it's That's turn. not how that works. Pato, you need to start. Okay, I'm about to start. Goofy. Shut up. Goofy ass. <laughs> Damn it. Now we can't be. Uh, never mind. Welcome everybody to the Funky hey. Anime Podcast. I guess no, this is the opening the now. No, I hate this. No, no we're not do doing no bit. bit. We're Pino, past Pino this. We're past this now. Pino, no bit. bit. There's no bit. I lied anyways. Pino, <laughs> we, Pino, we Pino, there was no bit. bit. I can even was, screenshot. There is no dis- bit. <laughs> there <laughs> is no bit. Guys, welcome to Funky Anime Podcast. Welcome back to the Funky Anime Podcast, everybody. Uh, the uh, recruits coming in today. Well, the one that's standing taller then a palm tree uh, with a goofy smile on his face. Well, that's Chuck. Uh, wow, he's... I couldn't hear him. Uh, wow. I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure he can talk. I just said he had a goofy smile on his face. He's just really high up. <laughs> it, he just sounds that far away. Oh, he's I see. that tall. How's the weather up there? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the second uh, recruit, who is just lounging around, sitting at the chair that was placed right in front of him. Well, that's Garb. What kind of dumbass puts a chair here? And what kind of other dumbasses didn't want to sit in it? You fools. <laughs> and the dumbass anyway, pulled the chair Anyway, what's the weather up there like? Oh, my God. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and the dumbass who pulled the chair out that, meant, that was meant for him. Well, that's me. That's Pina. <laughs> hey, that was my chair. <laughs> you fool. Can't believe it. We can sit on it together. Okay. No, this is your episode. You can sit in the chair. No, no, I don't want the chair anyways. <laughs> you can have it. Oh. oh anyways, chair. we're the three we bros, if you didn't know. We're, we're the Funky Anime Podcast. And okay, we're back like again, us. ready to watch more anime. But we already we're... watched it. Wow. Guys, we did watch anime already. I wow. Think... Wow. What did we watch? What did we watch? Well, the viewers picked it this time. Thank you, everybody. No, they didn't. They didn't no, pick they didn't. Tanya of Evil? No, you picked it. I picked it? I didn't pick it. You did. The viewers. Guys, speaking, <laughs> guys, guys, speaking of the viewers, I want to thank Mecca, Lazy Dude, 123, Jasmine, uh, Cosmos, and Cream Puff for being our patrons. If you want a patron, patreon.com slash three. I'm going to pretend the, the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend the patrons uh, picked this one. The patrons definitely didn't pick this. They no. picked it in spirit, you know? You know why I'm going to say the patrons? So so if you don't know, I've got a Patreon by myself. I'm just going to have a Patreon. <laughs> Do you? No, I don't. If I did, tell the me money. I would have I would have paid you at least twenty dollars. No, you, no, no. I, we put I, well, a typo for... in the three we bros and everyone's actually giving it to Pino. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's the trio we bros. The tree T R E E. The trio we bros. The tre- <laughs> T R E S. The triple entente we bros. Los tres amigos. Anyways, uh, we well this time you know what I actually didn't force my friends to watch Tiny of Evil. They forced me to pick it for the show. Yay! Guys, I never did such. A thing. Yes, this there is, was. So I held him at magical let, gunpoint. Let us let us roll back the let us roll back the curtain, which is well, this computer screen that you're listening through or your audio device. Uh, so we, we we've got a list. We've got a master list of the episodes we're gonna watch in the future, and um, 
you know, uh, I believe it was Garb and Chuck that were discussing, like, hey, you know, Isekai Quartet seems like a fun show. It was oh, me. but wait, Guys. we need to watch all of the shows to watch Isekai Quartet. No, no, yeah. what I what what happened, Pino? What happened? Putting words in what, the, happened? What, what, what happened? What happened? What, what, what happened? <laughs> Tell was, me. What happened was I am so cool and epic, and <laughs> I picked uh, I picked Konosuba. And I also hosted the episode. No, yeah, I also hosted the episode for ReZero. Or was that Garb? Someone hosted it. No, I wasn't Regardless. ReZero. It wasn't was me. Re-Zero? Couldn't have been I, me. I must... Are you sure it was probably Garb? I think it was Garb. It, wait, yes, it was. Yeah, it was Garb. No, it wasn't and, me. And then Garb. And like, Garb <laughs> I don't take and blame. Then, and then Garb also picked uh, a bad overlord. And I jokingly <laughs> said to Pino, you should pick Tanya of Evil because everyone else in this podcast has already done. Their fair share, so we can watch Isekai Quartet, and then Pino put it on. I don't remember that happening. Well, you have bad memory. Well, that's fair. Anyways, my friends forced Anyways, me to put Tanya of Evil on here, and that's now a we're, lie. which means we're gonna watch Isekai Quartet at some point in the future. But at some point, uh, it, not now. Not now. Not now, because we're watching the Saga of Tanya the Evil. Um, and before we actually jump into it, how are you boys doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Chuck? Huh? Pretty good? Yeah. I pretty good. So. Pretty good. Yeah, nice. Anything on your anime platter that isn't Tanya of Evil? Uh, um, let's see. I got a lot of figures. I got right. my Love Live uh, plush. Yes. I got sent in with I from Nijika Sasaki. Now I'm not alone with my con on plush. It's great. Well, I well see the thing is I bought this full well knowing that I must display this with my pride. Pino hides it. No, I now I now bring it everywhere. My coworkers think I'm strange. It's okay. Well, they think we're all strange yeah. anyway. Yeah. And I've also and I've also been watching uh, Dragon Man as always, and uh, I've been reading manga again. Finally Epic. got back into. Uh, I'm, I f- just caught up to Komi-san, can't communicate again. Getting ready That's for that. Uh, one piece One piece was crazy good this week. As always. <laughs> then, <laughs> oh, man. We got two One Piece chapters today, which is pretty poggers. Yeah, you got the VV uh, extra guys, chapter. The, guys, read the VV Nisekoi author, artist. That was so good. They had Bond Clay, and he said, if I stray the path as a man, I stray the path as a woman. And I was like, "That's it. That's my king." They had a very, That's... they had a very bodacious Hina, which I was not expecting. I, I, I was sweating. I mm-hmm. was sweating. <laughs> I was sweating. They have even a, a very handsome looking full body and Django. Django was okay. Full body Jan- was great. Yeah, full body looked like he wasn't a jerk. Yeah. Luffy looked a little weird to me though. I, I, he's, he needs a little goofier. Goofy ass. Exactly. Yeah, it seems like it's a good time all around. I finished part five of Lupin, and then I watched uh, a Lupin movie with Rasputin in it. I think it was uh, From Russia with Love. Oddly enough, okay. that it's the name. Pretty bad, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Animation, pretty good. Story, meh. I fell asleep halfway through, which is wow. something I don't normally do. Yeah, I woke up at the end, I'm like, oh, they're in Russia. Oh, Rasputin. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no. If you're if you're if you're looking for Lupin things, uh, don't watch part five until you watch a good amount of Lupin. That's all I gotta tell you. Because just got watch a lot of... Lupin before you watch Lupin. Yeah, watch Lupin part one, two, three, and four. Actually, don't watch two. Two is like 155 episodes. Uh, well, just watch part of it. So you're saying don't watch Lupin? Don't watch Lupin anyway. Just watch the Lupin Netflix series. Just the Lupin about Arsene Lupin. Don't the anime is bad. Don't look at that. Cool. Guys, the awesome. anime is bad. That, Dude, that was the bad. that was the shortest review we've ever done. Hey, man, Congratulations, that's the, guys! That, and that's, that's the, the end of this episode. <laughs> of Lupin, the third, the fifth, the fifth. <laughs> Anyways, Anyways. Uh, let's uh, let's I guess let's hop into uh, the saga of Tanya the Evil. You guys ready? Oh yeah. All right. Uh, have any of you guys ever had any inkling to watch this show or had any exposure to this? Isekai mm-hmm. Quartet, baby. Just Isekai yes. Quartet? I, I saw, I was like, we already watched three of them. I'm going to have to watch that one at some point. And so we did. I gotcha. Other than Isekai Quartet, I've never seen this at all. Like, I've, I've, 
I've like had no experience. I knew of the name, but I didn't know anything else. <laughs> yeah, Garble I don't Strange. even I don't even recognize it from. Well, I've only seen like two clips of Isekai Quartet, so mm-hmm. no. Didn't That's good. We're going in with it. an open mind, then going in yeah. with an open mind. Well, let me get you some background uh, here, fellas. Uh, the Saga of Tanya the Evil uh, began as a light novel, um, but strangely enough, it was like a web like light novel uh, written by Carlo Zen oh, uh, cool. with art provided by Shinobu Shinotsuki. Um, and then it was picked up by Enterbrain uh, as like a full kind of like novel series. Okay, has a, has cool. several like uh, volumes, which is nice. Uh, it eventually did get the manga treatment as always, as it should. Uh, with the art being done by Chika Tojio. So, it's pretty cool. Um, the anime didn't start until January 2017. It ran from yep. the 6th until March the 31st, 2017. Uh, followed by a theatrical release of, I guess, the next part of the story. Uh, mm-hmm. And now, we are actually waiting for the second season to come out. Um, yeah, which is should be coming soon. out pretty soon. Cool. Pretty exciting that we yeah. picked a series that's still uh that actually has a second season. Am I right, folks? <laughs> well, we yeah, because that's never happened to us. Yeah, no, that's releasing yeah. in the future. I don't yeah, think man. it has a, a proper release date yet. But exactly. One thing I do want to say though, uh, <clears throat> when it released, winter twenty seventeen, mm-hmm. pretty banging season for anime. I must admit. Sure, we got that hit Tony me with Super the... season two. We got Dragon Maid. Yeah, I remember. We Dragon got Maid Little Witch time. Academia. We got Gabriel Dropout. We got uh, Demichon, uh, which nice. is the one where all the little monster girls go to school by A1 Pictures. That's a fun one. Not and bad. then, actually, a show that I've been wanting to watch, uh, Descending Stories. It's a Rakugo show about storytelling, and I'm meant to watch that. But apparently, oh, oh also, come on, friends. How can I forget? Whoa, my guys. <laughs> the Season best, one? The best one. Oh Season yeah, one baby, wow. the best yep. one. It aired around the same time as Dragon Maid. <sighs> yeah, yep. dude. That was early Shit. podcast days. Jeez. Bro, I watched I watched that when I was in college, wow. and now I'm not in college. Man, wow. how time has changed. How time is timed. I also see that the uh, the uh, a Lupin movie came out in 2017. That's <laughs> wow. uh, the it's blood spray of Goemon that. Ishikawa, which is nice. I love me some Goemon. Good yeah. times. Hey, 2017 Guys, was banging. It. What the hell? Yeah. Hey. 2017 Super was, was a pretty then, dang right? good year for anime. Or was that not yet? No, I think it was. Yeah, it had it was. to be, at least by the end of 2017. Let me yeah. look. It's almost like I have a have a source a what? to look at. Why would you have that? Yeah, Dragon Ball Super started in 2015. So mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was shmoving and shaking. Yeah. Shmoving. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, dude. Uh, this uh, this anime was uh, produced by a funny a funny studio named Studio <laughs> Nut. Uh, we've actually, <laughs> nut. We've actually I don't think good. we've discussed Nut before, um, <laughs> nor have we had a Nut on this podcast. There's <laughs> three of not, them here. We've though. never nutted on this podcast. <laughs> There's before. only been three. There's only three nuts here. It's me, Chuck. And they're, well, because they're they're a relatively new studio, I think. Mm-hmm. Tanya not many Tanya not many first... things under their belt. Um, what yeah, I Tanya saw was their first anime, I think. Yeah. Well, they did um, the a only, pretty good job for uh, yeah. so. The only other some... series I see listed was um, a Fully Cooly Alternative uh, and yeah. then Deca uh, Dense, which is uh, uh, two shows that I've heard of but have no exposure to at all, other than obviously watching Fully Cooly the first season. Or they you must. Know. This must have been a studio that branched off another one, like triggered it, or like maybe it must have just have hired banging people from the start because yeah, yeah I'm trying to I'm trying to look up what the what the hell studio night like why was it created? You don't have your nut uh, button, do you? Uh, you don't need to get it. Don't worry. For shame. Okay, I'll be get it. Prepared with the nut button. <laughs> Can't believe it. It's all right though. It'll probably pop up eventually. Uh, but yeah, relatively I new. Don't know where um, the nut button is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm. No, I don't. We don't need button. the. We don't need the. <laughs> where is my? Suit? I'm, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna add the nut button in. Thank All right. There. In, Thank in, you. In, in wow, so <laughs> nutty. <laughs> Guys, wasn't that great? That was hilarious. I'm gonna. I'm gonna laugh when I listen back to this, and there's no nut here. <laughs> Good. You just put in a. Uh, doot, doot. Exactly. That's your nut now. But yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of unique to just find a studio that hasn't doesn't have a lot going on uh, with them. Uh, yeah, we don't we haven't 
I've seen a great many of those yeah. in this world we live in. Exactly. Um, well, I guess let's uh, let's dive into the show then. Uh, let's talk about the uh, presentation and whatnot. Um, yeah. The anime, surprisingly, looks pretty solid all around. It, I think, personally, it does suffer a little bit of the generic male face because a lot of the male oh, yeah. faces all are... The dudes, all the dudes look exactly they look the, the same. same. You can yeah. tell who's not a main character. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. if you're on one side also, or the I other don't... side. Very funny, though, that all the guys have, like, normal generic anime like generic dude faces mm -hmm. then all the girls have the, the big eyes big eye fucking, syndrome yeah yeah i'm like why why was this the choice huh yeah but, I, it's very i don't at least for me it's very kind of the contrast is so different that it takes me out at points but um yeah i think after watching weird. it does it does meld together i think i think they, seeing uh what's her name victoria Mm -hmm. That she she brought me out the most with her God big big eyes. <laughs> with silly big, big old eyes. eyes. Stop looking at me with those big old well, eyes. Well because like well because like even with like Tanya, mm -hmm. Tanya, you're like, okay, this is the main character. She's supposed to look a little bit fucked. Kind of fits her head shape too, at least with Tanya. Yeah. Yeah, because her head's fucking wide as hell. Yeah. She looks like Stewie Griffin. <laughs> 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 and that's the end of that joke <laughs> that's i might i don't want it to be the thumbnail i already had an idea for it but i don't remember it so that's if it ends up being stewie i'm gonna scream <laughs> oh my god now i can't unsee it thank you chuck <laughs> no problem that's what i'm here for I truly when i'm not it. hosting i'm just here to make the most oh crass god. comments possible you're, you're good stewie anyways i appreciate it but yeah, a lot of similar face, uh, similar face syndrome, uh, which is unfortunate. But again, it does work near the end. A lot of gray, kind of dark colors. Obviously, since the time period is set during a war, uh, similar to World War One. So I mean, I do appreciate those yeah, color contrasts, and I like the eyes that contrast. You know, the yellow, the blues, the greens, yeah. the reds. Those eyes are nice. Oh, yeah, they knew. It, yeah, it they looks, practiced it that shit. Good. The 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 settings, while kind of dour and muted colors i still felt like they were really good mm -hmm. i never had any any arguments with any of the backgrounds any of like the locations even with um i mentioned this uh when tanya went to the military academy and it was only like episode three or four i think and i was like oh this is a really nice change of like scenery already because mm -hmm. we had like two to three episodes of just war war in trenches and i'm like okay give us a breather you can send us back there in a bit mm -hmm. and i i really appreciate how they spaced out mm -hmm. a lot of that kind of trench warfare slash like because i i i didn't know how much fighting would be in the show mm -hmm. how focal that would be and i'm glad that it wasn't the whole anime i'm yeah. really glad that they we had a lot more political intrigue and with that it brought us a lot better settings and absolutely a, a much more diverse uh like kind of vibe throughout the show. So I really appreciated that. Now, one thing I do want to at least mention as well is oh, with the presentation, um, which kind of does tie into the story, is that this is kind of like an alternate kind of World War One esque kind of anime. Yeah. So it, it will have your trench warfares, you have your regular tank stuff, but then you also have your mages that fly in the air, which caught me completely off guard, but... <laughs> It's totally uh, badass, I, though. It, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. It's mm -hmm. uh, especially the aerial combat. Uh, yeah. It kind of felt like I was watching Eureka 7 again. A little bit. It was, it was, <laughs> they see, had so, some of those movements. Some of them were, well, were actually see, pretty good. that's the thing. I, you can really fuck up aerial combat, like, mm -hmm. big time. Like, just look at, you know, some, like, action movies, you know. Yeah. Watch a Michael Bay film and be like, <laughs> oh... <laughs> this is how you fuck up action Damn. so like this this was like it was still readable i feel like that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing like you yeah. can still track all the actions while still being high paced and like kind of moving and shaking so i i once again really appreciated that in this anime mm -hmm. definitely um i'm guessing we all watch this dub yeah yeah no i watched it subbed. you watched it subbed what? interesting what you, what'd you i have i have been watching a lot of dubs and i felt like you know what this is a 12 episode anime i've already watched overlord and konosuba and rezero all subbed 
might as well make the whole fucking quartet all subbed. So I watched the sub. Super good. I really enjoyed it. I loved Tanya's voice. I feel like Tanya's voice, while a little bit shrill because fucking she's 10 years old, but yeah. it worked super well for the character because you can still hear the kind of crazy behind <laughs> her voice, which I which I really appreciated. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm looking through uh, what else she voiced because I, I want to see if there's something that I like know her from. She's the she's frog girl. Oh, Aoi Yuki? Uh, Huh? Yes. The she's 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 frog girl in. Oh, uh, dude, what is that? Madoka. Maguka. I, ha- I never. Oh, she is Madoka. Oh, Madoka, dude. She's. Maguka. I hate her. I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So no, damn. she was. No, nah, she was a very, uh, very good voice for it. I really enjoyed. Very the interesting. Tonight. Yeah, but oh, I, I there was out. never there was never a real uh, like no characters that felt bad. I felt like Victoria. Sounded very, you know, good. No, Mm -hmm. like kind of had that kind of ditzy ish emotion while still, you know, having enough weight behind her voice and not just Mm -hmm. seem like she doesn't know anything. And, you know, all the dudes just sounded like dudes. I don't know. The crazy, the crazy doctor sounded really good as well. He just sounded like a (laughs) maniac. Well, luckily us, us with the dub, we got treated with uh, Monica Real as uh, Tanya, which I think worked really well. She has that uh, kind of crass, stern kind of like voice to accompany a very angry, <laughs> angry little person. There. What'd you think, Gar? I actually watched episode four subbed and did mm-hmm. watch the rest dubbed. Mm-hmm. But what is really great is that this dub is actually on Crunchyroll. Yeah, yeah. And it was so nice just to be able to just load up Crunchyroll and watch the show. Yes. Because I feel you, dude. Holy crap. It feels like it's been a long time since I've been able to do that. Um, we're not sponsored by Crunchyroll. Yeah. Crunchyroll, please. But we could be. We, we could, could be. be. Well, please. We're not. We're not. We're not saying we don't want to be sponsored by Crunchyroll. Yeah. So. But until that point, we are not sponsored by Crunchyroll. Yeah. Yeah. Crunchyroll, get more dubs. You actually, get more Spanish dubs. Correct that. Yeah. Oh, because <laughs> this one also had a French had, dub. No, they. This I thought they did everything. have a Spanish dub. This no, this had a Spanish dub. Portuguese. This had a uh, really. Dub. This had a Spanish dub. Hold up. Yeah, let me let me cr- crunch you. Dude, it had like guys, six French, dumb. German. Of evil. I'm an idiot. No, <laughs> you're you a watch <laughs> I'm literally boosted. Watch the movie. I'm in, literally boosted. In, for, in a fucking Spanish. Oh, I should have watched it in Spanish, what bro. A, what I'm gonna go back and watch this in Spanish. <laughs> cool. Oh yeah, I've been. Well, you got the good, movie, but yeah. So Talk that's Crunchyroll. lit, dude. It's easy Thank to you, watch. Crunchyroll. And no problem. I actually got confused because Crunchyroll's listing on it is really weird. And oh, yeah. <laughs> apparently Mal, my anime list, just listed all the episodes. So for the first little bit, I just watched it <laughs> like the Crunchyroll embeds on Mal. And mm-hmm. I got figured out from there. Nice. Good job. Very nice. Yeah, they have like a lot listed here. Like, yeah. Still. Well, because I, I have it listed by seasons, but each season is just a dub. Mm-hmm. Except for the movies in there. Yeah, but it's like in the middle somewhere. It's weird. Anyway, but mm-hmm. regardless, it was all in Crunchyroll, yeah. so anything you want, it's there. Exactly. Um, speaking again, just back on the dub. Uh, I think it's a very solid dub, especially because everybody just it just sounds correct to their character. And it sounds correct to the time. They um, cast it well. Yeah, cast it very well. Very serious uh, on one side and very goofy whenever they need it to be, which is not too often. Um, but yeah, overall pretty solid. If you if you like dubs, check it out. Yeah. If you like subs, check it out. Yeah. Uh, soundtrack pretty good, too. Um, yeah. Very heavy. There's, like, that one track. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sorry. It's every time yeah. they're in the air, and I'm just like, oh, my goodness. Very orchestrated again. Um, yeah, well, I mean, once again, they're playing big deep into uh, the German uh, kind of, like, choir. Mm-hmm. Like, kind of, like, you know. That sort of sh- I don't know how to describe it, but it's like, uh, what show? Kind of is does does fucking uh. Turn it I don't up. Know. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just thinking, but it's it's good. It's good. It didn't. I don't really. Nothing uh, really stood out, but yeah, nothing stood out. But once again, they all know, fit. It fit. It it all it all like worked well with the show, so mm-hmm. I got no complaints. Again, like this show is very, 
uh, competent is is how I would really describe this show. It's mm-hmm. not there's nothing that I'm like, oh, that's bad. There's some things where I'm like, was that the choice? But like, it's you know, we'll get to that later. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get absolutely. to that later. I got some I got some choice words for this show though. Speaking of uh, uh, music, let's actually go ahead and dive into everybody's favorite section. Yeah, the openings and endings. Guys, we did. All it. right, everybody. So that first opening. First opening, sorry, I had to click through my tabs again. It's called Jingo Jungle by Myth and Roy. Um, I don't know, as soon as that, that opening started, I was just like, why did I get uh, like Black Lagoon vibes from oh, it? Yeah. No, <laughs> well, because this is 100% Black Lagoon vibes. It's magical it Black Lagoon. Opening exactly. one, Black Lagoon vibes. Absolutely. Yeah. I will say, though, I don't think I'm a fan of the opening, though. Um, it's... I like the style, also, I like the intent, but I'm not a fan of the song. It's it's eh. but I, I do want to say though, um uh Myth and uh Royd actually did they did the first ending to uh Re Zero. Um, oh, that's why so it that's sounded familiar. Maybe where you hear them and then they also did an opening for Overlord uh the third they they've been the typecast for too. overlord the second <laughs> they're being they typecast. Did, they, they did they did main abyss for the ending theme. Mm. for uh for the movie not the movie. not the show but mm. um mm. yeah so they've done they have done a lot of uh a lot of stuff <laughs> not bad not bad oh they also did the ending for the first uh, overlord series so mm-hmm. we might remember them from that as well god I, I if i could tell you one thing i remember from overlord was that that one chick got clapped immediately uh what, by uh, like eyes on gold like some some like assassin girl like halfway through the series and that was the best part because she was disgusting i i, I couldn't i couldn't tell you fucking anything about overlord besides that he just went into the code and cheated himself to be powerful that's yes. all i remember i remember and then he buffed. Un gold and eyes un gold. <laughs> oh yeah albedo of course Albedo's everybody gold. remembers albedo everybody re- nobody nobody could ever forget albedo dude exactly <laughs> or the maid no everybody could forget the maid who exactly anyways <laughs> um this again this is this is opening is not a, it, like i'm not appalled by it it's fine it's, it's competent fine. once yeah. again it's totally fine. It it has the gears from the gun, but it uses some fucking reused animation, which once again, fine, whatever. I don't. I did laugh when not, they flew in the air in this opening, and I said, "What am I watching?" <laughs> yeah, it's true. the 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 first The first shock of seeing the characters flying in the air is very funny, but then you get used to it, so yeah. it's not funny anymore. It's just normal. Yeah. I do just... like I do like the use of uh like the the symbolism from being X. Mm-hmm. In these, because it has Tanya shooting the the Nutcracker, and then also the dude on the train station mm-hmm. uh, platform, and it, and it, you know it showed some of the characters. I I felt like it once again competent. Nothing nothing that I'm like, oh my god, this is a great opening. I even literally I don't even think I could put this in the top five of winter 2017 openings. You know, mm-hmm. like it's it's fine. It's whatever. Yeah watch it 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 serves its purpose and that's that's really all you can ask right yeah anyway i'm gonna watch the dragon maid opening so. okay i'm gonna talk about the ending then <laughs> so the ending since you know we're, we're talking about tanya evil not not uh not dragon maid anyways Guys, uh it's dragon called lost 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 so good uh sung by the voice actress uh for tanya uh Ayo, Ayo oh, good. um yeah. i like the song i also like the art um yeah i'm not appalled by this which is nice i think this is a good i like this ending because this i think Mm -hmm. this is all the art done for the light novel correct it looks like it yeah yeah. it just has that i don't know that grit to it and i'm gonna say well i prefer the art for the light novel better than the uh than her design in the anime well i'm i I just know for a fact that trying to animate that sort of style would be a lot more difficult so i assume yeah I know why they they did the the adjustment that they yeah. did, but I do mm-hmm. really like the art in here. Yeah, Shout I do kind of wish they they didn't just do you know black bar so we could put credits here. And yes, instead did it a little bit more inventively because you know you could have played around the images, but song's good. It it it, it it's kind of I really like I really like the song. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. listening back to it, I like pumper. forgot how much of a good song it was. So I, I really enjoyed this ending, despite me not remembering much of it. Exactly. 
you know, it's a slideshow. It also show, beats out fun. of the other slideshows, sort of, that we've seen. Just Yeah, it's, it's well, because it's stylized. I, yes. Guys, every time we talk about this, I got to bring this up. You can have a slideshow, you can have sliding PNGs, but it's got to be stylized. You can't just take key visuals from the show and slap that in the end, because I'm going to fucking rip you a new one if you do that, <laughs> so don't. So I'm still, still, I'm still molding over Kogias because nothing in those endings. Oh my god, that makes me so sad! <laughs> Opening three for Code Geass had the best song, and it, they fucked it up. God, it pisses me off. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Uh, surprisingly, we got two endings on this one. Um, we only had ending two for one episode. I believe that was episode eight, uh, and that one was. Yeah. Um, I, you know, song is pretty sweet. Uh, but this focuses more on like the 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 moment that happened there, where she fights uh, uh, a, a man dude. from the Republic, uh, and he he you know his daughter gave gave him a gun, so and he you get a little bit of focus against... on that. Yeah, and for the he, holy for the for the holy one, dude. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's fine for him. a one time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not as good as the first ending. Yeah, it's literally the gun, a flower, and then sparkles. <laughs> I get why they did it, but also like. It's fine. Yeah. I could if you didn't have it, I would be okay with it. Yeah, Again. but it, I I don't I don't feel like it's a bad choice, but I just don't think it had quite the impact that they were probably hoping for. Yeah, I mean he the, the, spoiler the dude comes back so <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so I'm just like spoiler spoiler he's not dead so yeah. like comes yeah. back. Why'd you give him the special thing if you're just yeah. okay? Yeah, he didn't get GG. I mean, he well, might. But we but... gotta, we but we gotta show the dude so that we know Mary Sue for the next season. God, Mary Sue! Which I know you lost your mind on the Patreon. I, I, the, oh my god! Oh, we'll talk about that. Oh <laughs> my god, though that that there's so many like naming choices of this show that absolutely rubs me the wrong way, and I I couldn't explain <laughs> oh. why. By the way, I never mentioned the name or the artist, so this is Sensen No Realism uh, by <laughs> Mako and Nina, so thank you for your wonderful voice. I just wish the animation team did something a little more interesting, just a slightly more interesting. I don't know. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. The blue eyes, though, near the end, very, very nice color of blue. <laughs> I like the, like, embers. I guess that's mm-hmm. what that is at that mm-hmm. one point. I thought that was pollen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it kind of... No, yeah. The it's pollen of my pollen-y. enemies. Yeah. Oh, it's in her uh, eyes. Oh, she's going to be... She's going to cry. She's going to cry. She's going to die. Well, we're all going to die, aren't we? It's okay. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that that's mostly all the presentation. Uh, any Anything else you guys want to say about the presentation looks, that we might have missed? Looks good. You know, no no real qualms. The explosions look good. Mm-hmm. Uh it was you nice know, to watch something with, uh, you know, an art style. Just whatever. It's just not the usual generic. You know, like except generic the, anime. Except the men yeah. characters, you know. Yeah, which, it's generic I mean, military that's men. That's not who the focus is, so yeah. it's fine. You know, totally main characters acceptable. look cool. Yeah. Um, and not just Tanya, um, mm-hmm. but, you know, like uh, yeah, Visha no. also. Yeah, you know. Yeah. You know? You know. Yeah. It'd be like that. You you know. Yeah. You know? know? If you don't know, then you know. Someone was supposed to say that. Thank you for leaving me hanging. I hate you both. Anyways, let's start on that. You ready for that synopsis? I'm ready for that synopsis. All right. I'm going a little bit out of order because I feel like that was a stupid choice putting episode two in episode two instead of putting it in episode one. Um, just spoiler alert, guys. This is an isekai. <laughs> no, I like that. No, I like that. I, I like that. I, I've got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna fight for this. Okay, actually, t- l- actually let's talk about that. I, so this is an isekai. Uh, yes. But actually, let me read my intro, which I actually did write yes, out. <laughs> please read the intro, please. Sorry, All right. I, I'm just like I'm like I gotta defend this show a little bit. Got you. So again, I'm gonna start out of order, then I'll let I'll let Chuck uh, tell me why I'm wrong. Okay. Uh, so uh, there is a certain man in Japan. Uh, this man has a very good job, earns a very good wage. Uh, this man worked hard to reach his position. Uh, as a member of the HR, or the Human Resource Department, uh, he's the man who has to give bad news to all the incompetent workers out there. And he likes doing that. A lot. Well, he doesn't like doing that. Uh, this he's... man likes to make things efficient. No, this... He's, effic- well, he's a yes, man of efficiency. Yes. He, he's, he doesn't crave 
the the firing, he's like, to make more efficient, you know, get the yeah. fuck out of here, you screwball. Yeah. <laughs> one day, he had to inform one of the co-workers that, uh, you know, they had to pick their things up, leave the island, I mean, leave the building forever. <laughs> You've been evicted <laughs> from the island? <laughs> Guys, you're out of the Big Brother house. <laughs> get out of here. Take your bags and go. <laughs> and go. <laughs> you... um, so, the co-worker was so upset that he followed the successful Japanese man all the way to the subway station. Right before the train arrives, this co-worker pushes the Japanese man out into the subway tracks. The Japanese man is about to die. Before his demise, however, time freezes, uh, and a voice is heard, almost coming from everywhere and nowhere at all. Uh, this voice asks the man to acknowledge God and the devil. He, uh, you know, or, you know, to acknowledge the higher powers at work. Well, to God. The man yeah, refuses. So to acknowledge God. Yeah. The man refuses, stating that, you know, whoever this higher power is, is running things very terribly. The power, which gave me the a power giggle. of free market economy is truly <laughs> should be the power, which which got a good laugh out of me. But yeah, also, man. that's how that's how I knew that he was the devil, because he was touting capitalism. So exactly. I was like, oh boy, uh, you know how to rub me the wrong way. Immediately show up. <laughs> the man dubs this voice being X. <laughs> Furious at this incredulous man, Being X pledges to make this man acknowledge God in a new life. Yeah. Uh, this man is then As, reincarnated um, into a new world, yeah. a world that shares similar beats with the world um, of pre-World War I. Yeah, uh, so I want to actually point out the reason why um, Being X reincarnated this Japanese man was because he said that life was too easy, like mm -hmm. that he... He had everything, so there was no need for, like, a belief in God. Mm -hmm. And so God, being X, was like, okay, let's make your life a living fucking hell then. And reincarnates him into goofy. a body of a small, goofy ass, and then bam, gets hit by a train. Sad, but yeah. yeah. Then he kind of makes the best of it, is the thing that's I mean, weird. yeah. I mean, the man comes into this twist. new world as a, as a, you know, as a, obviously as a baby, but as a young blonde haired girl and thus begins the tragedy and the saga of Tiny the Evil. And I thought, personally, I would have liked seeing that in episode one, just no. because, just because watching the first episode, seeing all this action, I'm like, okay, this is cool. Where's the Isekai? <laughs> yeah, like, ha ha I like wait, that. <laughs> I, I really liked how they did that because right. every fucking Isekai you watch, First episode's always a goddamn slog. Because they're like, we got to show this character. We got to show this character dying. Like, we got to do it. Yeah. And and I'm tired of that. Like, I get it. You got to do it. You got to kill the dude. You got to kill the girl. Whoever the fuck you got to kill, you got to do it. But it comes to a point where, like, we've seen this enough. We know how the isekai works. Right? And so showing, I feel like showing, like, the quote-unquote present-day tanya is is a nice way to mix that up because we see that this like kind of character has like made the most of their situation and you're like okay we know who this character is as tanya and then we get that little backstory i don't think that it negatively affects it because you don't need to know that it's an isekai, really. I kind of forgot it was an isekai. Yeah. You don't I, I feel like I feel like that's kind of, it was kind of just like a necessary thing that he was like, okay, I should probably make this an isekai because isekais are big and you know, all those things. And then just worked it, just kind of pushed that off to the side. Cause I do like how they include being X a lot to like kind of drive that little bit forward why everyone's going after Tanya so much and all these, all these aspects, especially like the crazy dude that you know we talked about in that second ending, and so establishing that in the second episode, I feel like helped the flow so much better because it puts you into the world immediately. You don't have to be like, okay, we're in Japan for this first half of the episode. We need to do all this shit. You know where the show's going from day one, from this first episode. It sends you there, and then it's like, okay. Now we'll show you how they got there in like, you know, you know, probably like eight minute time. And then you're back in it. And I feel like that worked so much better because I'm I was engaged immediately mm -hmm. instead of if you showed me that, like, you know, the dude monologuing 
and being like, oh, I had to lay off this guy, and then sees him and the talking with being X. I feel like that just isn't as interesting without the context of like Tanya fucking murdering a whole squadron of dudes. Like, yeah. like you you know that Tanya is evil, and so seeing her pre-incarnated form was kind of a dickhead as well, kind of an asshole. I feel like that totally worked towards showing that this person wasn't a really great person to begin with, but it didn't make him seem like he was so high and mighty, you know, like without anything, he didn't seem like as much as a jerk just because you know what happens next. So I don't know. I really enjoyed that choice and it, I can't see it working for a lot of anime, a lot of isekai because you do have to kind of establish and blah, blah, blah. But I feel like, the choice here worked very well, at least in my opinion. You know what? You make a great point. That That's it. You make a great point. <laughs> Thank you. You've convinced me, but screw you. Anyways. Okay, fair enough. Hey, hey, I, 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 yeah, that's fair. Uh, but yeah, um, luckily in this form, uh, Tanya retains basically all her memories uh, of her past life and her knowledges, past experiences, and essentially vows to uh, prove being X wrong, to uh, survive in a world uh, in the brink of war, and to kind of just, you know, <laughs> live a comfortable life as she did uh, back in uh, back in her old life, which is uh, something I can get behind. Comfortable, A comfortable life is the best life. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. Uh, the rest of the series, uh, I'll now jump back to episode one. Uh, we be, we're in the middle of a conflict, uh, a trench war. Uh, I believe they were on the Rhine front uh, or the Rhine yep. Peter. Uh, and they were, they, you know, they're blasting away. Uh, Tanya then goes ahead and blasts away as well. It's going to be a lot of me saying they're blasting things. Uh, anyway, I started blasting. <laughs> Tanya Degurachov, which I think that last name is pretty cool. Uh, leads the third platoon of the Imperial Army. Uh, I think, uh, I don't remember what the other number was. Uh, but she is a mage, uh, meaning that she has funny little shoes that make her, or a funny little boot that makes her fly in the <laughs> air. Big, um, yeah, and a big box in front of her. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, while showing her aerial combat skills, uh, she begins praying to being X Almighty and whew, gives her immense powers because uh, before being sent over to the world, uh, and before finding out, um, in the following episodes, uh, you know, being X was like, oh yeah, if you want all this extra power, uh, you got to spread my name. Uh, well, I don't believe you. Well, you're going to believe me. You can't use this power unless you pray. <laughs> and so I started yeah. laughing. <laughs> being X is such a jerk in this show. It's good. I appreciate hey, it. Um, it did the job. Little... It did the I job. Like it's being true. being X is a little bit of a spiteful asshole. It makes me happy. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, so in in this context, Tanya basically can only be as strong as she is if she does pray to a, a, a being that she doesn't believe in, which I thought was hilarious to me. Um, as the series progresses, uh, Being X does involve uh, itself in Tanya's life trying to essentially kill her. I mean, he literally, like Being X literally said, hey, uh, you know, you haven't acknowledged me. You're already like nine, ten years old now. Uh, what's the holdup? <laughs> Tanya's like, I don't, you know what? Screw you, dude. I'm, I'm living my life. Shoot, I'm about to leave the war. He's like, you're about to leave the war? <laughs> Lamau. Lamau, dude. You're going to the science corp. And you know what? I'm going to give this crazy ass scientist uh, the bright idea to make a, you know, a badass kind of like weapon. A type 95. I love that. That, that so science cool. section was so cool. I'm not going to lie. I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because once again, I talked about it before. Mm-hmm. It was a nice change of pace. It was a mm-hmm. nice shifting of the perspective a little bit to not just because a lot of these like fucking war shows, it's all just like, let's do gun, let's do strategy, let's go back to gun. And they don't go into like the kind of the background of, you know, all that like development that mm-hmm. goes behind weaponry and things like that. And so I thought that was really interesting. And I was very glad mm-hmm. that they kind of touched that. Mm hmm. And so, essentially, like I mentioned, um, she's in the science division because of her acts of bravery, and she hates it there. Like, she's been blown up every day, scientists don't know what they're doing, 
And before she leaves, she writes a letter to you know headquarters saying, "I hate this. Please, please take me out." They realize, "Oh yeah, this is a child. <laughs> we should probably get her out of there." Which, which is something I do appreciate about this show. They don't gloss over the fact that oh, this is a child. They don't like. They acknowledge the fact that this is a kid. And I'm just like, yeah. this is great. Like, thank you. Give me, give me reasons to make me think this is a believable world. And mm-hmm. I thought that was very. Just every time they brought it up, I'm like, thank you. You'd a, you'd a real OG. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, the being X visits Tanya at night as a nutcracker, uh, saying, "Oh yeah, um, screw you. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're gonna regret. You're gonna regret getting me angry." But at the same time, he shows up in the scientist dream, a little loony scientist there. Following day before she leaves, scientist is like, "Hey, I had a dream that this is gonna Let's work." Let's do this one more time. <laughs> yeah. He's like, "Let's yeah." <laughs> Uh, I had a dream. We're going to test this one more time, uh, but we're going to do it because the Lord wills it. And lo and behold, uh, they do the test again. Tanya's in trouble. Her gem, which gives them power to fly and like do all this crazy sh- stuff, uh, is about to go haywire. Time freezes once again. Being X says, Tanya, pray. <laughs> Tanya's like, no, I don't want to. Lo and behold, she ends up praying. I don't, don't want to. I don't want to pray. She prays. She says her, her thanks. She says, Itadakimasu, and then bam. Unlimited power has surged, making not only the science man a believer. <laughs> thank you for the meal. <laughs> thank you for the meal, dude. Not, make, not only making the science man a believer, but Tanya being slightly angry and peeved at being X, which is always great. But, again, uh, she already asked to be transferred, so she got transferred out. Uh, now we get a weird kind of slice of life section where she just goes to school. I'm glad it was only like half an episode though. Um, she goes to I'm glad that officers they did camp. It, though. Yes, I am glad she goes to officers camp. <laughs> um, and she's like, okay, great. I get to I'm, I'm away from the front lines, no battling anything. This is great. And if I make connections with higher ups, I can have a more comfortable life. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, she meets uh, General Zatour. Uh, in the library, and this man pretty sus. I don't. They they're setting him up for something, but I'm not entirely sure what. Uh, but he, you know, he picks her brain a little. He's like, you know, what would you do in this scenario in the war that we're in? Uh, Tanya briefs him. Is like, oh yeah, you know what? This could all lead to world war. You know, what we should have we should have a faction of mages, just one faction, and we should go ahead and train them, and they should be kind of like our front guys doing special tasks as a special force group. This man's like, great. Put in an essay. Okay, she makes an essay that gets up to headquarters. Headquarters like, who did this? Zator's like, oh yeah, this child over here. A good a Bam, child, let's, baby. Let's Don't give you a, let, this child. Yeah, let's give her a promotion. You know what? Better yet, this was her idea. Let's make her the general, <laughs> making her life even more awkward. Now that she is, she has to now raise that army of mages that she wrote in that uh, dissertation, which I thought again was even more hilarious. Being X, you strike again. Um. This uh, bodes well because, uh, well, she's gonna. She basically wants to go out of her way to make sure this doesn't happen. So she's just like, "Oh, I, I'm working alone. I can't access all these. Uh, I can't organize all these like uh, participant forms and like, uh, you know, new recruits. You know, the uh, the uh, what, what were what was their faction called? I never actually paid attention to that part. They Which are one? the uh, the the German esque uh, faction. They're the Rhine, right? What what you the, mean, Rhine, the the empire? The empire, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember the empire's name because like all I it's, cared it's about was the empire. It's called the empire. It's the called empire. the empire. Well, that's called literally the all it is. The fatherland. No, no, well, yeah, it's called empire. Like that's well, literally what it's called. It's so stupid. Okay, I'm gonna get into this now, <laughs> so we don't have to get into this later. I've it's been trying the hardest not to bring it up because I didn't know what to call it. I am so upset. Okay, so we have. So basically, what we have is an amalgamation of World War One and World War Two. Mm-hmm. That's what the story is. Mm-hmm. And so, in the first episode, they show you a map. They're like, "This is the Empire. It's a fucking map of Germany." And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, cool." Subtle. So it's 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 World War One, World War Two. Cool, cool, great. I get it. And then they're like, "Uh, here's here's a <laughs> the Republic." Here's the Unified States. Here's the Russi Federation. What the fuck? <laughs> kind of Russi. Sussy Russi. It's kind of Russi, dude. I don't understand <laughs> why they're like, they they literally, they, oh my God. They literally 
put the state of Arkansas in this show. The state of Arkansas. And they still called it the Unified States. They called it the U.S. <laughs> the Unified <laughs> they just, States. That's I'm, pretty good. I'm, I'm Stop so talking upset. about the empire. I'm tired of hearing it. <laughs> I was so tired of hearing it. Because it's literally just like either A, just fucking do it. Just call it Germany. Yeah, just no balls. Just call it the U.S. No balls. Or literally just Change do a different map. You already have the shitty stupid names. So just do a different map. You could mm-hmm. literally just, you could do a map with the same type of like geographical um, choices because yeah. I I know for sure that this web novel wanted to be kind of an alternate universe of these of the world wars essentially mm-hmm. as an event because there's already a bunch of different um, uh, what's it called sorry uh, focuses oh. of it because. Um, what was it? Because even with the the Dachian um, war, mm-hmm. or, you know, the Dachian, it's based off of Romania. It's literally named after the native tribes that lived in Romania. And it even uses the fact that Romania, when it was, like, being attacked by Germany, and I, I think it was World War One. They were still in like full, like formal war fighting outfits, mm-hmm. and they didn't have like any modern weaponry, and so they got curb stomped, like in this. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's just like, it's so silly. It's so silly. Just, just, uh, just pick one. You exactly. can't straddle that line so much. That, it made it like, kind of uncomfortable to watch sometimes too. Not, not even that though. I like, I get it. I understand, like, and they've already kind of shown that, like, I do appreciate, because I know we joked about this on the Patreon, that it was like, ha ha, propaganda show. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like this was really a propaganda show. Like, it shows you they're really really evil. Yeah, it didn't reach the general conclusion that uh, Germany around that time, pretty fucked up. Well, see, that's, well, see, the thing is, I also appreciate. That they didn't go for a World War Two Germany, <laughs> like ideology. It went for World War One, which is just nationalism, mm-hmm. protecting being a like the superpower in Europe. Yeah. I, I actually did some some history checks on this because I'm like I need to make sure that I actually know what I'm talking about during this episode. <laughs> but like, I I do appreciate that it wasn't. <laughs> it, the the base of this war wasn't about the genocide of a certain people. You know, yeah, I, that would have yeah. been. That would have been. That would have been really not great to watch. Mm-hmm. So I do appreciate that it's more just nationalism, protect our borders, you know, expand our power, blah blah blah. You know, They're kind of generic all right. that's, wartime. That's yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. So it it could have been way worse. It could have been so bad, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so I I uh, so once again, just fucking pick a choice, dude. Just... Yeah. Come I on. didn't laugh when they said Arkansas. <laughs> that was cool. They they said Arkansas. I I like. I had to stop. So so what was happening was I was watching um I was watching this episode uh with my partner Joan. Joan was playing The Sims mm-hmm. and they were playing so while I was watching on, on my second monitor and that I literally like like grabbed the mouse from them to pause it to take a great screenshot. Because I'm like, <laughs> there's no way that I'm letting this go by without me just posting a screenshot and being like irrationally upset with that choice, <laughs> but I just oh man oh boy. Anyway, that's that's my whole spiel. That would just pissed me off and made me upset. And I like, feel you. I kind of get why they did it because like you know, oh this is a like oh this character is participating in war in you know like uh, fascist Germany. You know, <laughs> <laughs> not that big. Like I get why they didn't want to do that, but like then just don't use a map of the fucking Europe. It's like, you just don't. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, even all the symbolism in the Empire. Sorry, I'm uh, <laughs> just, okay. I'm just pissed off about that choice. Anyway. Yeah, you're fine, man. You're fine. But yeah, uh, this was a uh, this was a show nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, as, as we left off, she was in charge of creating, you know, the first battalion, the first mage battalion, special forces. Uh, once she does, uh, she's reaccompanied by, what was her name, Victoria? 
uh, Veronica. I don't remember. Start with a V. Big eyes, big uh, big old blue eyes. Victoria. Yeah. Um. The, uh, she goes was, by Visha. Visha, who was part of her uh, initial platoon in episode one, uh, but was sent to the capital uh, just because you know we got to keep you safe. Uh, and she's like, oh yeah, let me help you organize all this stuff. So with a couple of uh, with a bit of elbow grease and a uh, grueling selection process, the the battalion slowly becomes, uh, you know, full of eagerly, uh, eagerly nationalist uh, soldiers ready to participate and train. Uh, given a month, uh, Tanya essentially beats them, <laughs> beats them down, shows them true hell on earth uh, in the in the Mulan training montage. No, uh, essentially, I mean that was so brutal. She was just like, okay, guys, first you're in the snow, survive. Like third, it was like thirty-six or like forty-eight hours of missiles being shot down from the sky. After that, now you got to make it to the new base camp. You make it, or else you die. And that was it. Was so you could tell Tanya didn't want this team to exist, so she just put them through the most grueling test. And I thought that was hilarious to my to, to me. Uh, but she does sort of care about the you know the people there. Like there was one guy who shouts during that episode, and that leads to an avalanche. And, like, everybody gets GG'd by the avalanche, but Tanya's like, oh, my stupid soldiers, and then goes ahead and saves them uh, one by one, and then says, okay, we gotta go. Um, after that whole month process, she's like, oh, yeah, I need more time. Uh, but eventually, she does get the team uh, ready and waiting for their next deployment. Uh, they are sent over to Dakia, uh, which is uh, the next area that they want to attack. They decide to attack a group called the Entente. Um, but also kind of like bend kind of like the rules of war a little bit. Um, so in a sense, what happens is they're sent over to that nation. Uh, they go ahead and leave warnings before and after they completely annihilate the city saying, Hey, we're going to destroy you guys. Any retaliation after this certain point, we'll, we'll, we're going to consider you enemy faction, part of the army letting us kill you without any question. And I was just like, well, damn. Well, geez, that's the one way to, like, swing over uh, swing over some uh, pen and paper things written on a, written on an agreement. Uh, but I did like that because it was more of that political side that, um, that I really enjoyed. It's like bending the rules, making sure that everything can go according to the Empire's plan. And it's just careful thinking. I was just like, this is so evil. This is so dirty <laughs> that I kind of like it. Uh, yeah. It was just, it was, I think it was just the smartest way to handle it. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciated the, the very, the very, like, in your face evil mm -hmm. about it. I they're, really appreciated they're that. They're not, they don't cover it up. And that, that's the best part about it. Um, they're mm -hmm. just, they know what they are. Like, they, yeah. it's for the Empire, for the Fatherland. Um, so they, you know, they init uh, initiate the warnings. They said, okay, you haven't left yet. Time to GG you guys. Uh, they go <laughs> ahead and GG fucking. everybody in that small little town. And there is a scene there that I do want to talk about. There is a soldier in Tanya's platoon that is kind of on the fence about killing civilians and whatnot. And he has kind of like a one-on-one -on -one with Tanya after they yeah. essentially demolish the enemies. But see that the um, the quote unquote um, uh, the citizens leaving the town, and sh like the boy is just like, hey, I Tanya, like we can't do this. Like they're they're innocent civilians. Like they're they're not against us. But Tanya kind of spins the story in a, in a reasonable way. They're like, hey, the people leaving, they're angry. They you know they might not be a threat now. But give it time, and those people are gonna come right back and and like and attack us. And she's like, I'd much rather get rid of them now than worry about them later. And this kind of throws this man into a loop. He just starts, and, you know, he breathing heavy, getting nervous, and then you know he has to do what he has to do. He goes ahead and uh, along with Tanya, just goes ahead and you know GGs everybody. <laughs> yeah. And that was that was it. Like honestly, that was like really thought provoking in a sense. Just like. Yeah the 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 scary and like the the dark part of war you know if you want i appreciated it yeah and if you wanted like a secure victory you have to be thorough and i was just like Oof, geez like you're pulling yeah. out all the stops 
Yeah. Someone has to write yeah, I, all that I shit it up. Good. It has exactly. to go through approvals like everything else. Mm -hmm. yep. It's pretty scary, but mm -hmm. that's how life is. Mm -hmm. uh, shortly after that, uh, we do get kind of a mini arc uh, about a another gentleman uh, fighting for the Republic as well. Uh, he goes by the I know his last name is probably Sue, uh, spelled with an X, um, Anson Sue. Uh, and this man, you see a little scene of him saying goodbye to his wife and daughter, daughter gifting him a gun with initials on him, uh, essentially saying, hey, you know, you're staying behind. I want, I want to make sure you're safe, so I'm giving you this gun. Father takes the gun proudly, uh, but knows he has to go and fight uh, the Empire you know, to protect the land, to try and, and, you know, make sure that their land isn't muscled in on by this ever-expanding nation. Uh, this small platoon gets into the fight with the mage squadron of Tanya. Tanya essentially just, like, bodies this man, like, hard, like, oh, yeah. hardcore bodies this man, uh, stabs him, and lets him fall into the water. Um, Tanya thinks that this man is dead, but this man sinks down to the bottom and actually survives thank you to the grace of the heavenly father mm -hmm. uh who also gives this man some strength uh and i like how they kind of like painted that because like you know his eyes were a different color at that scene and then afterwards when he wakes up from uh this short little coma he had for like several weeks uh <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. has yellow eyes, and I was just like, oh my god, <laughs> being X is just going, he does not want Tanya to have a good life. Um, which is great, because I like having an antagonist that isn't really tangible, in a sense. It's like, yeah, it's like you can't bonkers. really defeat, you can't defeat being X, you know, mm -hmm. you can only stave him off. Mm hmm. But, um, I, it, Sue comes back, he, uh, and, you know, a second round uh, of Tanya versus Sue uh, happens, and he puts up a fight. It happens a little bit later in the series, but I don't think many things in between were worth talking about. I mean, they did successfully remove people and then have a party, which also had another thought-provoking scene uh, with Tanya and Glasses Boy, whose name also escapes me until I scroll up. <laughs> uh, uh, Eric yeah. uh, von Reagan, uh, or Reagan, uh, no, Reagan. I, uh, I, 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 I liked all of the, all, I don't feel like there was any parts that like were like unnecessary, but also <laughs> you don't, we don't really need to go over them. They're not of utmost importance to yeah. understanding the plot. The only thing in between that I did like was it's after, I believe it's either before or after. Cause a lot of things did get hazy for me. Um, I finished this one in the morning, but, um, there is a point it's, where Tanya and um, Eric uh, are talking, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're drinking some coffee, we're not supposed to do that. Um, and they're just like, hey, if we want to end this war now, we should have gone out and, like, completely annihilated everybody there before things got worse. Yeah. Superiors are celebrating. The aristocracy is like, oh, we've won. Look at how superior we are. But, you know, they're not the ones out in the front. They're not the ones strategizing. They don't know how far this can get if they don't do something. And I was like, oh my goodness, like, <laughs> this is the this is the stuff I live for. It's just like, um, you know, soldiers having to follow orders, but also having the, a mind of their own, kind of like knowing better than their superiors and showing mm -hmm. the kind of class struggle going on in there, uh, which is, honestly, I thought that was my, that's like my favorite part of the entire show. I was just like, yeah. yo, I'm drinking coffee, just talking. <laughs> I agree, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, but... Also man, a very oh man. realistic thing, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, you, sometimes you got to make choices or things you want to do, but things will prevent you, either, you know, superiors. Um, but, yeah, uh, that that aside, uh, 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 Mr. Sue comes back, uh, fights Tanya one more time, uh, gets bodied again. Not but before, like, he, he tries to go all, like, uh, he goes, like, he, became, he basically becomes, like, a human bomb uh, trying to blow everyone up. Uh, yeah. Luckily, he is stopped, uh, and then, you know, they overtake that part of the nation, uh, and then the show kind of, kind of, you kind of get the similar beats of the show, it's just like, oh yeah, we won, but we got to prepare for the next uh, encounter with the enemy, you know, war, world war is imminent, uh, but there is a scene, I don't remember if it was an after credits, I think it was an after credit scene, um, you get news that uh, Sue's group uh, fails, oh. and like the United... Uh, the United 
What do they call it? <laughs> it's, it's the United. No, it's the Unified States. The Unified the States. U God, I hate it. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything because I know I'm gonna mess it up. The Unified States. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter if you mess it up because they are already messed up enough. God, the un the Unified <laughs> States. Uh, the news gets there. They're like, oh, the empire is growing, and we need to like retaliate. And then you get a scene with Mary Sue, or Mary Sue, the daughter of Sue. It's me off. And then she's just like, I got to enlist. I got to fight. And they're like, but your father and your mother, you know, they sent you here so that you didn't have to see war. And she's like, well, this too bad. war. Bam. Too bad, and so, Lamar. and then you see her eyes turn from like her original color to yellow. And yeah. I, I lost my mind. I was like, you can't do this to me. <laughs> Being X, you can't do this to me. Them crazy. Uh, setting eyes. up, it's yeah, essentially setting up the hopefully the I think is a sequel movie and or this the next season. I'm not yeah. too sure. Uh, a little short series. I did fly by a lot of things, but it's mostly it's not fluff in between. It's it's more of just like depictions of like fighting strategies and and just like fight scenes that I felt like we could honestly just not talk about at this point, just because I find the the story beats a little more interesting and. Yeah. Um, despite it being very short, um, I think it worked. I think it worked really well. Yeah. Is there anything yeah, else like you guys it. wanted to bring anything up or? Uh... Not, not really. Yeah. Not really. You pretty again, money. pretty solid show all around. Not to, as long as you're. I mean, I feel like if you know your history, this show might be a little more up your alley. You'd be like, oh yeah, I know this. Or like, I don't oh, yeah, know, so. man. It would probably infuriate some people. Be like, what, maybe. what the oh, yeah. fuck? <laughs> well, maybe if, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> They'd be like, Chuck, just call it! <laughs> call it Germany! I am confusion. I am Why is this one Ar 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 not Arkansas? Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, that's the show. Uh, I am interested in watching more. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I might want to, you know, maybe the movie will show up in the in the list, or I'll just watch it by myself. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. What was the name of the movie? There was like a movie, something about pasta? Pasta Lavasta, dude. Pasta Linguini. Pasta Linguini, Asta Men Mencini uh, was the sequel. Just says Tanya, the saga of evil, the movie. I can't read. Saga of Tanya the Evil the movie. The movie. What the hell? The movie. I have to check Crunchyroll and see. I, unless it was like it, I, unless you read Portuguese backwards then. <laughs> yeah, maybe 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 you're just bad at reading. Yeah. And Crunchyroll lists season 32 Saga oh, we'll of see, Tanya the Evil Operation Desert Pasta. Ta uh -huh. It's listed well, after the movie. Yum, is that yum. is that the restaurant that we're Trying to I, see, that's I see it where on we're the, recording. I see uh, it on the this list. is yeah. This it's an is, O and O and A. It, it, yeah, uh, it's just a. It's just a. It's an. That o must be the a. restaurant. Yeah, that's what I was just no, saying. No, no, it, it has isn't. to be the restaurant. No, that will the Tanya and the others be able to eat the delicious rage. pasta under the conditions of water shortage? This is the restaurant. It has to be. This is not the restaurant. This has to. Be. This Operation is not. This is no. This is an episode. The restaurant has fucking JPEGs. Aren't they just moving JPEGs? I'm gonna, I'm gonna move dumb. your JPEGs. Uh, duh! Have <laughs> you misaligned my pixels, dude? Dude, you I better guess realign just... those bitches quickly. <laughs> what are you saying, Garb? We're, we'll have to watch this for a filler. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh my yeah, the God. pasta, my favorite. Okay, oh, so right. let's talk about here. I was no, Unless I want to talk. Sure. Where was it? Um, I'm tr yeah. So. Uh, what should we call it? Tanya of Evil, the, uh, what was it? The pasta, the, so we were talking about the, um, the restaurant mm -hmm. thing. I think that's literally, it's just a, it's a light novel series of just, I don't know, man. Soldiers eating and making stuff. It's a manga, question mark? I don't know. Interesting, weird. It's weird. Uh, Wiki admins, I might please email us. Wiki please admins, add that to your fucking wiki, please. <laughs> Jeez, you don't have to be so mean about it. Oh, well, damn. because I, can, I'm, I, I would just appreciate if they, if they made it more accessible for me to find the pasta linguini, okay? Pasta linguini, uh, that's over there at a, uh, it's, it's over there in France, you know. It's um, I'm no, sorry, not for France, not France. It's the Francois Republic. The France. 
<laughs> with uh, rapid, with their capital with, Parisi. Parisi, dude. That's where uh, that's where linguini. Uh, that's where uh, that's that's where we get ratatouille, dude. Rat, rat patootie. There we Can go. Can we talk about the characters now? I can't talk about these places. No, nah, we're anymore. talking about ratatouille. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's talk about the characters. Let's start off Thank with God. the one, the only Tanya de Grichov. Uh, I hate her, but I also I, enjoy I, her. I hate her, but I think she's such a cool character. Yeah. Yes. Which and is which is the point. <laughs> it's great. It's it's probably it's probably my favorite thing in the show. Just the knowledge that Tanya has in her previous life. And using that to her advantage uh, as a really as cool. essentially a, a child soldier, which is a little sus, but <laughs> yeah, that uh, to start off with is pretty fucked up. So, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, no, she despite you might only thinking her being just like evil and just angry about things, she does have some funny moments. There is an after credit scene um, where she's walking to a I guess like a safe house with another general. She's just like, oh yeah, I don't smoke next to me. I hate secondhand smoke. Walks into the <laughs> walks into the building. Every every old man there is just smoking, and she just you can notice. Oh yeah, the and she's like, face. I'm dying. She's I'm like, secondhand smoke? Have you never heard of that? And she's just like, I hate my life. Exactly. Uh, and even those bits where, again, you know, she's obviously has the memories of the uh, of a man, but in the in the in a now compact body of a child dressed up uh for like pictures and whatnot and her fake ass smile that got she that got a that. big deal out of me <laughs> that was that was a good one yeah but yeah oh. uh, despite that cold exterior she does in a sense care about successfully and, yeah. being not in war which i think is great just trying to find the best way to make her life more safe she almost kind of has a heart yeah almost uh, a heart that was only like maybe a, a molecule thick. It's a molecule thick. Uh, but yeah, uh, design wise, I don't know. Those eyes still scare me. Maybe that's the point. <laughs> yeah, they do pierce through the soul. Yeah. <sighs> Never mind. Uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Uh, let's talk about uh, the second in command, uh, Victoria Ivana Serra. Oh God, Serebriakova. Bri blah, blah, blah. Couldn't say that. Victoria. Wasn't she a lieutenant uh, by the end? She's a lieutenant, I believe. I don't remember. She's her right. Song. She's her right hand man. She's, she's awesome. A, she's she's a she's a corporal question mark, but that might be later in the. Uh, yeah, yeah. By the end of season one, I'm pretty sure she was a lieutenant. No, no, um, no. Yeah, she was first lieutenant. She yeah. was first corporal was when we first met her. Mm -hmm. She's adorable. Uh, she is obviously still, you know, uh, not a good person, but oh, yeah. she's at least a better person than uh, Tanya, which is she, which is a nice contrast because she's actually kind of nice and caring. She's kind of just along for the ride. <laughs> she's along for the ride. Um, she doesn't have as much moments as I thought she was going to have um, upon oh, initial shit. watching. Because, um, again, she disappears for like the first two episodes till she's uh, brought back uh, to help out Tanya. But she is, she's, I guess, the human side of this kind of conflict, which is kind of nice yeah. to have, um, despite having other characters also fulfill that role. Yeah, but um, you need some good contrast that's close <laughs> to Tanya, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, being being angry all the time does get tiresome. Uh mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I don't like her eyes. Anyways, let's move on to, uh, let's talk about uh, Hans von Zator, the man that uh, Tanya met in the library. This man has, has an agenda, and I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. He's got uh, something. That being said, his haircut is a goofy, uh, but I still <laughs> yeah. like it. Yeah, I like, um, he's, he's an old dude. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these next characters we're going to talk about are all basically going to be the same. Old yeah. dude. He's... Old dude commander guy. Mm -hmm. General. Kind of <laughs> sus. <laughs> kind of kind of sus. Yeah. <laughs> but that's Hans von Zator. Uh, Eric von Ryugen. Um That guy I like more. He was legit. He was legitimately afraid and still probably is afraid of Tanya, which I think is great to have. But uh, afraid in the sense as to her potential in harming um, not only, you know, others, but the Empire themselves. So. 
it's pretty it's pretty interesting i like that um it, it kind of likes it's, it's kind of like he acts like an antagonist but he might be the protagonist <laughs> yeah he's trying to make yeah. sure evil doesn't really he doesn't want the nation to become too evil in a sense and tanya is yeah, really I, pushing he, it that he has, direction he has like that kind of conscience mm -hmm. to a point mm -hmm. i would hope exactly i also don't understand his hair so i it, what can somebody explain his hair he's got like like I two can't. little tufts on each each side i can't i couldn't tell you couldn't it's tell fashion you. Uh, tell you. it's fashion Come it's on, the idiot. empire fashion i get, psh, i don't know fashion dude. <laughs> <laughs> i'm no fascist got it <laughs> anyways that's my good joke of the day <laughs> the best joke of the episode. all right <laughs> next is kurt von uh rudus uh rudersdorf i can't read that one good job. general he's fine he's, he's another general big old mustache kind of stalin-esque uh features but uh, he's also just like mm, kind of in the background in a sense despite him being a man of power yeah. uh i do want to talk about warren grants i believe that is the character that had that meltdown in the war uh like deciding whether or not to harm the civilians so shout outs to that guy anyways next shout out goes to mr anson sue he was an interesting character until he got yeah. gg and until he got absolutely g just smashed yeah man he almost he he almost got the uh the big boss treatment he uh all he needed to do was uh wear a bandana uh and then he, <laughs> he would have been set um uh, but yeah uh kind of like a one no character not one no character but like He's he's got one not, dimension. He's got a family. Yeah. He's patriotic, and he wants revenge. Yeah, just not, not, not much too... depth beyond that. Yeah, I will bring up Doctor uh, Shugel, which is the scientist uh, who worked on all the experiments and uh, with the Type ninety five uh, that Tanya now uses. But Pino, he's an engineer now, a believer. Shugel is a fish. He's now a man of the cloth. Well, not a man of the cloth, but now he believes. He believes. He's a believer. He's a believer. Sadly, those are the only characters I have any inkling yep, of talking about. It. Minus, <laughs> minus being X. Being X is pretty sick. Being I like, X. I like... <sighs> go ahead, you go first. <laughs> no, I just, I just like how being X is kind of a omnipotent, but not like every episode in your face. Like every couple episodes, he's like, "Hey, remember me, dickhead?" And then he, he shows up. And I, he's I, like, I, "Don't forget about me." Yeah. Don't forget about me, you Dumbo, and then leaves. And I appreciate that a lot. Mm -hmm. so, I think it's great. I really liked the use. I liked how restrained they were with using him. You yeah. can see his effects on different characters, but you don't have him like talking to you every episode, being like, <laughs> "He's not annoying." He's like, "Hey, hey, hey, you're hey, not, hey, you're not, you're hey. not gonna get a good night's sleep." <laughs> yeah, exactly. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, it's more purposeful. There's more tact, uh, which is yeah. great. Uh, I kind of want to see how far this goes. Like, I want to know. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually really curious on like what comes next. You know, invested. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm invested. That's a good sign. That's a. Good I want to know if he show. is actually God or the devil. Like, I want to see which one he is. <laughs> Why not both? Why not both? Da, 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 da. Uh, anyways, uh, man, good this one. show is weird. It is. It is Very a little weird. bit wacky. I don't really have any miscellaneous things to talk about, uh, but we did get this oh, telegram, shit. but it is, um, I got to uh, decode it. You got to give yeah, me a minute it's to for decode Lieutenant it. Chuck here. Yeah. I, can you, can you pass it to me? I yeah. yeah just... Here you go. Let me get <laughs> that. Let me... Okay. Okay. Let's see. I can't read. See. Can't read can Empire. Oh, wait. Can oh, we, hold we... on. Sorry. I didn't give you your magnifying glasses back. Let me give oh. you those. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. It's. It's it's a it's a hard work being the only person who could read uh uh Republic <laughs> Republicanese. <laughs> Dude. What uh, does it, say? it says uh, let's see. If you carry the one <laughs> it <laughs> seems there a to one? say that. Uh Welcome oh, to no. the 90th edition of Who's the Best Girl, the part of the podcast where each contestant put for their choice for best girl oh. the episode and do it out for title. A best grill. Today our contestants, hey, Pino, guard myself, and the Patreon. Uh, who are you each advocating for? So, um, I'll, I'll start because the patrons, I believe, also 
pick the character yes. that I'm going to talk about. Uh, we're Correct. picking uh, we're picking being X. Just nice. because it's pretty cool. It's pretty hard to beat an om omnipotent best grill, but the best I can do is pick Visha. Visha, Visha, Visha. And Chuck? I picked... Uh... Adelheid von Schugel, the uh, the crazy guy. Von Schugel. <laughs> well, watch out, my toaster strudel. Uh, <laughs> mm, breakfast. Who would like to start? Oh, you go I for can it. do it. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, okay, great. Um, guys, I love a scientific man. A man of science. He's he's a man of science. He 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 knows what he's doing. He's a little, he's a little crazy. I can admit that, but you need to be a little bit crazy to do science. Science that's, is unforgiving. That's but fair. He is, but he is, uh, he's doing great. I think he's a fun character, a really nice foil to both uh, being X as well as Tanya, because mm -hmm. he's a maniac, but like, in just like a neutral maniac way, not towards good or evil. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that he's just kind of a, a a whack job, and he's also he just seems like a fun guy to be around. Yeah, that's a hundred percent fair. I actually don't have anything negative to say about him. I like that he tied his hair back after he spoke with uh, being X, but that's yeah, about he, it. Also, he looked very hot in the manga for some reason. What? I'm send you guys. I'm gonna send you guys an image of what's on the wiki. Oh my god! Oh my god! Why did they? Why did they? What? Anyway, he's hot in the manga, so like, nice. I've checked off every box I needed to do. So. Dude, you're gonna get Isekai into the manga instead. God, please. Oh my god, I don't have anything negative to say. Hell yeah. Do you know why I don't have anything negative to say? Why? Because it's because it's supposed to be that way. Thank you, being X. Yeah. For being X. Thanks, divine intervention. Shoot, we thank divine intervention because uh, because reincarnation. You know what if. What if I accidentally farted in front of the auditorium? Bam, reincarnated into a new life. I don't what know if, if that's how that works, Pino. Pretty sure. It does pretty because sure. he'd die of embarrassment right then exactly. there. Exactly. Exactly. See, he would have sent guess it. to the next realm. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? If your life gets kind of boring, bam, another yellow-eyed person trying to destroy my life. Easy peasy, dude. And you know what? I like talking to nutcrackers, dude. <laughs> Pino, I'm going to crack your nuts if you no, keep no. sucking God's dick like this. Because Amen. Because being X isn't praise, great because... Praise be. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I just, not, I just think he's too, he's, he's too fickle. He's, he's too he's fickle. He's not cool. Yeah. Dang. Well, he's maybe I mean, a pickle, even. Wow. Oh, I turned myself into a pickle. <laughs> being X turned I'm me into a X. pickle. I turned myself pickle into a pickle. Pickle X. Pickle. <laughs> That's not going to be the thumbnail. Oh, no, boy. it's not. That wasn't the thing I wanted to do either. So, <laughs> oh, and uh, Garb, let's hear. Uh, let's hear why. Uh, why you want that? You know, Fisha is just a badass, and she, yeah, is just doing her best. You know and what? That's fair. After the war, she's going to have a a lifetime supply of beer, and I'm going to let her drink all of it. Hey, she deserves it. <laughs> She one hundred percent deserves it. Yeah. You know, I don't. She's she's got a little evil in her, but you know, who in that circumstance wouldn't? Yeah. So you know, Me, she just I needs wouldn't. a couple years of domestication. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Garvin's gonna be canceled for that one. <laughs> I guys, that we've, was, that guys was... we've said some really <laughs> sus shit on this podcast episode. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. With you. Well, it's okay. Is it the okay? Russies aren't going to get us. I don't know, Wait. man. <laughs> I can't believe uh, it. Anyway. Anyway, if you think we should all be canceled and sent over to the uh, front us. lines, please give us an email. Send us an email at contact at funkyanimepodcast.com. That's the only email. Or Medica. Yeah. Oh, if, Medica. Uh, to use the Medica. suggestion box to tell me how fucking dumb I am. And Medica Dude. at FunkyAnimePodcast.com You're so oh. stupid <laughs> Or FunkyAnimePodcast at gmail.com But anyway, miscellaneous uh, I don't have any I don't want to nah. watch the movie I kind of want to watch the movie I want to watch this pasta special Also, guys I want to go to the restaurant um, Hey guys, by the way yeah. um, So everyone remembers uh, 
six days before this podcast aired, it's Pino's birthday. Wish him a happy birthday. Whoa. I didn't know happy, that. Who's Pino? Happy, birth- <laughs> happy birthday, Pino. Oh, thank Yay. you, guys. Thank you to you, too. And everyone Dude, else Bono? who remembers. <laughs> do you t- that's not what I meant. It's easy for I me to remember was... because it's on my sister's birthday. I can't Dude. believe it. So thanks, it's Pino, for, for making it easy. I can't believe Bono uh, loves Pino. Anyway, Dude. that's all I had to say for miscellaneous. Hey, thanks, <laughs> We got man. no emails. Stupid. No emails. I guess it's time for ratings. <sighs> I haven't thought Oof. about ratings. I know. I haven't thought about it either, but I'm going to start anyways. Please do. Tanya of Evil made me feel uncomfortable. But at the same time, I had a lot of fun. It was kind of a series that I thought I was going to hate to start because of the subject matter that it was going to touch upon. War, uh, imperialism, nationalism. War never changes. Yeah, well, except when you have like flying boots. And oh, leeches. my mistake. It's yeah. true. It does change when you have flying boots. War has changed. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, it hit It hit some, of the, some beats. Again, like you mentioned, political beats, uh, some story beats. It, it's not too like big think- of an anime so i'm not uncomfortable by it i think the antagonist being a again omnipotent being is very unique and very cool in a sense instead of like at other points in our other series where it's like oh yeah there's god we gotta kill him uh yeah. and then you know jrpg your way out of this this one is more tactical more tactful um did i feel uncomfortable with all the blood no this is probably a pino show <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it, it, I would say so. Yeah, this isn't even um, the goriest thing we've watched on the podcast. So. I know. No, the, you know what? The thing I didn't mention. I'm glad they didn't. Uh, as 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 many other uh, anime series do, they did not. They did not lutify the lolly, which is great. I pre- I fucking appreciated that. Holy that was shit. so. I was. You know, thank you guys. Like, thank you yeah, for thank not guys, doing thank, that. Thank you. They guys. just made her a badass instead, or well, yeah, uh, they made her evil. They made badass. her crazy. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, no, it, it was, I definitely recommend it to someone who's kind of on the fence. Yeah, I'd, um, I'd, I'd say this is a good show. But I'm going to give it an uh, overall rating. I'm going to give it a, a, a 3.8, 3.8. Pretty good. Like, I'd watch it probably again. Uh, I'd, I'd look forward to the movie. Mm-hmm. Maybe the movie's better. But, um, yeah, check it out if you've got the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll go. 3.9. Same, same thing. Enjoyed it. I feel like, I, I don't feel like it said enough that really, like, propelled it for me. I really enjoyed it. Very competent anime. I feel like you can't go wrong with watching this, but this isn't something that I'm going to necessarily be mulling over. Like, the same <laughs> thing as an anime like, I don't know, Vinland Saga. Something like uh, Haruhi. Something like Beyond the Boundary. Uh, erased things like that i will think about and i still do think about quite often i don't think this will be as recurring to me and as such the staying power in my mind i think is going to be a little bit less and that's why it's only a 3.9 interesting yeah i think i'll give it about a a 3.7 wow. yeah, it's pretty good but what is not trashy was, in anime, dude. Yeah. Well, we were. It's a, it's a good show. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, was, this has been was, the first time since <laughs> Love Is War that we fucking haven't had a, a, a mongous amount of things to say. Having yeah. a short show makes a big difference. Um, oh yeah. They didn't was, really mm-hmm. get to the same problem. Like, um, you know, the last thing we watched was Eureka Seven. Eureka Seven had good, some but moves. it had. As we talked about in the episode, it had a lot of fluff. This very fluffy. Yeah. It got to the point. It didn't waste too much time. Pacing mm-hmm. was pretty good, pretty balanced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And had I, an art style and pretty. It good did have an art style. I did. I did really appreciate. It. I, I. This is very funny because I had talked to my partner Joe about this before. They had. Um, they had uh, messaged me because after we watched Eureka Seven, they they said that hey. You know, I wish you guys had more time to watch these anime because I feel like you would have probably enjoyed your record seven a bit more if you didn't have probably. To blast I mean, I probably and, and I agree like, with that sentiment. No, yeah, and yeah. I was like, there's definitely an argue to be made that like watchability and like digestibility is a huge part of our ratings at mm-hmm. points, and so having a shorter. Also, this is the first time we've had this short of an anime since. What was the last short even, anime? 
I mean, a, a I was going to say Love is ago. Love is War was 24. Yeah. But, well, like, yeah. I can't remember the last time we watched a 12-episode anime. So, mm-hmm. you know, good, though. We enjoyed it. I mm-hmm. feel like it was a it was a good time all yeah. around. Definitely. Hey, uh... Hey, uh, Grundle Bundle. Yeah. You know? What are we watching? We're watching Shield Hero next time. Oh. Guys, we we pranked you because, uh, fucking <laughs> Shield Hero shows up in season two of Isekai Quartet. <laughs> so we gotta watch this one, too! I can't believe it. But yeah, only one season because the second season isn't out yet and we don't want to watch 50 episodes. Oh, thank yeah. God. How much is this one? I think uh, 25. 25. Yeah, that's pretty good, and that's probably on Crunchyroll. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I mean, I mean, most shows are. I'm excited. I've, I've actually heard good things Yeah, about this is this recommended. Um, I haven't seen it yet. Um, have any of us seen it? No, no I just know that there's a I know. I know it exists. Girl? Squirrel? Yeah, girl? I, I know that people are horny for the raccoon. Oh. Yeah. Also, I think the shield is probably the best thing shield in the world. The shield is definitely the best. Cool. When when they when they when they give you shield sword or fucking the key? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, no shield sword or was it magic? Yeah. Joan, Joan, in 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 Kingdom Hearts, it's a key, it's a they sword, give, and it's wands. No, they give magic. you a sword, a shield, and a wand, right? Was that right? Sure. That's, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I was just I was, I was Thank you. Uh, oh, anyway, that's <laughs> that's the. Anyways, you always pick the shield. <laughs> oh, so no, yep, bad. we're picking the shield next time. All right. Look forward to it. Pretty epic, dude. Well, cool. we've graduated Officer Academy. Uh, uh, we are now fully fledged knights. Uh, the knight doing uh, doing figure eights in the sky. Well, that's Chuck. You. You. Wow! And look at him go, dude. <laughs> Zoom. Wow. The guy drawing an intricate picture of a rose in the sky. Well, that's Garb. Yes. Yeah. Well, I might as well make something out of this if I'm gonna have to do work. <laughs> Wow, this guy zipping and zooming. What the heck? Yo. Yo. The guy wishing that his position was not here and instead back at base. Well, that's me. That's Pino. Oh, no. God, I hate my job. <laughs> I'm gonna that's crash. Pino. Oh. Pino's office. No. Oh no! Please, I don't even. Oh, it's just a closet room. <laughs> well, there it goes. It's toasty in here. Yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> Fried everything in my room. <laughs> This has been the Funky Anime Podcast. Tell your mom you love her. Don't join. Anyways, we love you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. That was a good episode. Pretty that good episode. Quickie boy, honestly. Yeah, I told you it was supposed to be quick. Okay, it's done.